Good morning, good morning, good morning. And you would believe that I am this awake after not going to bed all night. My name is Brent Smith. I have Dangerous Dave on camera. And we've got George, our Ascari, sitting behind us. Now, we decided, since we're awake, and we're on our way home, well, we're on our way to drop George at home, and then Dave and I are going for a daytime nap at Sala's camp. We'd show you a bit, so we're going to be driving through, because George is also quite tired and would like to get home. So if you have any questions about the Great Migration, now is the time, hashtag Safari Live. As you can see, there are thousands upon thousands of animals all around us. And uh, I still can't believe I'm this wide awake and happy. And I think the last, what time was the last cup of coffee we had, Dev? About 4 a.m.? 4 a.m. was the last cup of coffee. <coughs> now we got taken on a bit of a wild ride last night by the Purungat Pride and the Notch Boys, uh, who we spent a lot of time with, only to have them disappear at about 1 a.m. right onto the top of Lookout Hill. So it was quite, quite incredible that they just vanished. And then this morning we went around and around the hill once it got light looking for them, still no luck. Uh, and then we suddenly saw a different section of the Purungat Pride, uh, the ones we were with the last time we did the full night and uh, they started stalking some zebra but one of the young males made a hash of it and then uh, we saw the females again a little later but no sign of the notch boys again so as you can see as we drive up on these crests uh, well, Tanzania is down, that's Tanzania those mountain ranges in the, in the edge there and uh, literally all these hills are just covered covered in wildebeest. Now of course, because we're live, you don't know whether around the next corner or over the next hill there might be a lion. Actually we spent quite a lot of time, George was it here last night? Yes it was here. Uh, we were down in this very valley in front of us uh, looking for the Silas pride last night but they managed to evade us before we went and found the Purungat pride around Lookout Hill. Now, remember, we are live and we are heading down a slight slope. It should be all grand. We do have, yes, no, we'll be fine. There's a, there's a repeater on top of a, that little hill over there. So I've just got to make sure we're still learning all the areas where we have great signal, good signal. But we do cover the majority of the Mara. Now, Who can tell me? I've got a question for you as well. Oh, but we've got a question first from R. Lara Moore, who would like to know, are the herd sizes easier to approach as they get larger? Well, yes, they, they sort of got nowhere to go. Um, so they are sometimes a bit easier to approach. Now I am keeping a very careful eye out, I mean we've been looking for lions all night but now that the day is up, ooh see, now that is something a lion or even a coalition of male cheetahs would take advantage of. Somehow this poor wildebeest next to us has hurt his leg. Now he's probably not going to make it all the way to the Mara River, so probably about 7 or 8 kilometers uh, directly over uh, behind us. I think the hyenas, the lions, or the cheetah will definitely take care of him. And that's how it works out, yeah? So, there is a time and place for everything. And now is the time, not only for the wildebeest and zebra to feast on all the luscious red oats, oat grass, but it's also a time of plenty for the predators of the Maasai Mara. Okay, we've got a little dip coming up ahead. And that will be in a, a bit of a blind spot. And I'm hoping, so we're gonna go down through this blind spot and hopefully you'll be back with us shortly. But while we do that, Steph is with some mountaineering pachyderms. I definitely am with some mountaineering pachyderms and uh, a very good morning to you all from the Mara Triangle here in Kenya. Uh, myself and Senzo just head out and as you can see on the edge of the Ololo escarpment are some cliff hanging elephant. Have a look at this. Let's go out a little bit just to show you exactly what I mean. Isn't that incredible? 
That is the Olololo Escarpment. At the top and the head of that valley is where our camp is in the final control. And we'll go in over there. There we go. That's the final control. James's Airy. There's our tents. And then if we go left a little bit and out to the point of the escarpment, that is where the world famous Angama Mara Lodge is at the moment. You can see that the elephants are right underneath us. Spent most of the night in the forests. That's what they do out here. This time of the year, the forests are quite nutritious in terms of, um, in terms of what they can offer uh, the elephants in terms of food. And they go at night time into the forests. And the reason why they go at night time there is because there's a lot of people that live on top of the escarpments. And elephants are scared of people. So they come up the slopes at night time, into the forests, feed in the forests. And then during the day, they come down into the grasslands that you can see stretching out in front of us. And isn't that a beautiful view over the Mara River drainage basin? There in the distance are another group of hills. That's another feature. That is where all the crossings are at the moment. And there we have three or four hundred thousand wildebeest that are massing and crossing and recrossing from one side to another all over this area here and behind those hills. That's where Brent is right now. He is on the other side of those hills. <laughs> a very, very far way from here indeed. And isn't that just the most amazing thing? That green belt of trees that you're having a look at there, that is the Mara River. That is what's left of the forest. It changes this area so much and it's gone from grassland to forest back to grassland again in the process of doing so right now. Now Mita, you're only eight years old and you've asked me such an awesome question straight out of the jungle book. Have I seen any stampedes since I've been here in the Mara? Uh, no Mita, I haven't seen any stampedes barring a couple of elephant herds that have been running at me uh, and past me when we're driving past them. They're not as relaxed here as what they are at Juma all the way down in South Africa in the Kruger National Park. Um, I'm not quite sure why that is at the moment. Some herds seem to be relaxed, others are not so relaxed, uh, but they definitely have stampeded at and past us. Other than that, hippo stampede quite a lot. They sort of they don't stampede, I call it rampage more than anything else. They sort of rampage past you back to the river or away from the river. Um, but in terms of buffalo or wildebeest or zebra, we haven't seen any of those stampedes just yet. And I presume you're meaning because they're running away from something big and scary. Here the lions are just starting to realize that the wildebeest are coming all the way from the Serengeti National Park in Tanzania all the way into the Masai Mara and into this area. And in a few short days, you're going to be seeing all the wildebeest from all the way out there coming to dot this landscape. Now, it's not like this landscape is empty. Just have a look in front of you at all the zebra that you can see. Zaz, you want to know where do the migration animals go when they've obviously arrived in this area and then depart again? So as we've got two types of, of animals here uh, in terms of migration, migration uh, or the theme of migration. We have the resident herds, which is what you're looking at right now. These are all the animals that you're looking at now, all the zebra, wildebeest, buffalo, elephant, Thompson's gazelle, eland, and so on and so forth that live in this valley and will stay here uh, all year round. And then you have your migratory animals, and that is made up of wildebeest primarily, with some zebra and some Thompson's gazelles, and a few other animals that tour with them. They're on a circuit, and it's mainly just food-based, between the Masai Mara, which is really good food all year round, and the Serengeti National Park in Tanzania, northern Tanzania, which has really exceptional food for a portion of the year. And these animals move from here all the way through to uh, the, um, the Serengeti, which lies in that direction over there, and then come back again when the Serengeti dries up, which it is at the moment. Right, we're going to carry on down this, uh, this road. We're going to see what we can find. I'm going to hug this forest that you see here. Ah, oh, there we go. There's a spotted hyena making its way home after a long night on the prowl. And uh, whenever we are ready, we're going to be sending you over to Tristan, 4,000 miles away in South Africa.